Ronnie Dahl for Wheeling Australia. Welcome to another episode of Modified and check out this Land Cruiser here. It's a 73 or a 74, I'm not too sure. Russell. Hey Ronnie, how you going? Good mate, how are you? Yeah, good. It's VJ74, it's a 1989 uh, 74 model. It's got a 3.4 litre turbo diesel in it, four cylinder. Automatic gearbox, 24 volt, and uh, it's a Japanese import. Being 24 volt, yeah, Japanese. Import. So, did you import it or something? No, like? I actually got it from a car yard in Perth uh, that it was imported by by them. Uh, What's the setup for? It's a setup for both touring and four wheel driving. It's got a lot of things, accessories underneath, to so it can go anywhere as well as being being able to go far away and nice tour so with it. Bit of a bit of a toy and and a traveller. Yeah, sure. Here's another interesting fact about Russell and his seventy four series Land Cruiser BJ Cruiser. How long you had it for? 14 years. 14 years. Now that's experience of a vehicle. How many Ks on the clock when you got it? Bought it with 95,000 Ks on the clock and currently it's got 350 something. Nice. So this guy will know the ins and outs of this vehicle for sure. Sure, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I had a brief look over it already. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So I think we better get straight into it. Sure. Bar work on the vehicle. You've had this for 14 years. Was this bar work on it when he bought it? No, it had the Japanese stainless steel bar yeah. work on it. It was in a, a bit of an accident, so it ended up getting an alloy bull bar made up for it, a custom one. Who made this for you? This was done by Irvin Bull Bars in Midland. So, so they make bull bars from scratch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So I gave them a bit of a drawing as to what I wanted, and they made it up for us. Mm. And given there's no airbags and stuff, you, you can yeah. easily do that with these yeah. vehicles? No, it had, to, it had to be a custom one because of the way the um, front chassis is made because of the extension on with the winch. Yeah. Well, let's go on to your winch, that's a high mount winch. Yeah, it's a factory fitted 24 volt Toyota winch. It's basically a worn winch uh, with no labels on it. So it's just a 9,000 pound uh, high mount winch, 24 volt as well. Pretty quick? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really, really good go. for the, especially with the 24 volt, it's got a lot of, lot of balls. Yeah, that too, yeah, 24 volt, that's mm. awesome. So have you used it on yourself more than others, or others more than yourself? Uh, it's probably, I've probably used it on more other people, pulling them out than myself. Okay, although I'm I have, telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> although, although I have used it to get myself out of a lot of sticky situations I've been in. Yeah, it's definitely paid for itself. Did it start with Dyneema Rove? No, it had uh, steel cable on it. Recently, over the last couple of years, I've put the Dyneema on it. Was that a choice of safety, or did you have kinks in the... Steel rope. I had the winch rope replaced, but they put 50 metres on, so it wouldn't fit unless it was rolled on neatly. So I took it all off and uh, put 40 metres of Dyneema on, so it's got a fair bit of room now, and it's a lot easier to handle when you're trying to pull it up hills and stuff like that. Side steps are using the factory ones. I can see they've been bashed up a little bit. Yes, yes, it's de definitely had a lot of off-road uh, experiences and uh, mishaps. But the clearance and a short wheelbase, you're probably looking at it, you don't really need a rock slider as, as such. No, the height, it does quite well. The ramp over mm. angle is uh, actually quite good on this vehicle. Yeah, it'd be very good on this vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too short, not too long. Yeah, yeah, best of both worlds. 
So at the back of this vehicle, you have the factory steel bumper, but it looks like there's something missing in between here. Yeah, there used to be a step there uh, until it fell off one day. The old Another. trippy steps they can step in. Yep. But, but steel bumper on the back, you don't really need to put anything else on it. And your 33 fits on the back here fine. A high lift jack mounted here, rubbish bag. Roof rack, that thing up here. That is a unique looking roof rack. Yeah, it's one of these uh, gum tree specials that we found one night. 300 bucks worth of roof rack that was pre-made for the vehicle. So I had to get it. So it was a custom made roof rack? Yes. Yep. And it just happened to fit this vehicle? Yeah, yeah. That's a lucky, that's a lucky uh, find. Yeah, the guy was down in Bunbury and it, it come off his car, his Bundera or BJ74. Nice. And it, they yeah, were pretty rare, yeah, 74. Yeah. Lucky find. It, it was, I had to have it, so. What's underneath it? Is that a solar panel? Yes. Yeah, I've put rails in underneath so I can slide the solar panel in and out. Same with the tent rails. I've got, I can take the tent on and off with the rails. And I've got slides that come down to the ground so I can just pull it off onto slides, slide it on and off. Oh, nice. When you slide the roof rack out, does it stay up there and just hang out the back or is it to take it out and put it down on the ground? The panel or the rack? Yeah, the panel. No, it's to take it out and put it on the ground. Oh, yeah. you can move it around then? Yeah, I've got cable that plugs into the car and extension cables and stuff, so I can go. Yeah, nice. How yeah, many watts? 180. 180 watt panel. Rooftop tent, G camp, that's the cover, yeah? Yeah, it's just the cover, just a replacement cover. How big's the rooftop? 2.4 by 1.2. So 2. Big enough for two people? Yeah, two people, yeah, sure. Two chairs on the front. You've got two gas bottles up there mounted. Um, quite conveniently. We've got the two two small bottles so when you run out you've still got gas. You don't have to worry about having two big ones or trying to get them filled up. And you were saying something about you connect them while they're still up there? Yeah so I leave the gas bottles on the roof and I've extended the gas line to the stove so the yeah, gas bottles stay up there and don't need to move them around. Uh, so very, that's a very two, convenient. 270 awning coming around, one pole in it, correct? Three. There's three poles in it? Yeah. Oh yeah, the extra poles. Yeah, nice. Do, any reason for that or? Uh, just, just for the extra stability and being able to tie stuff to it and being able to tie it down when it's windy. Cool. We got the awning out. You want to run through these lights you got under here? Yeah, sure. i uh, just got some um, LED uh, eBay specials with some dim dimmers on them. Uh, so you can have all three on or have them uh, dim. That's awesome. We'll have to put a link to these lights underneath, eh? Yeah. I reckon a lot of people will want these. So yeah, they come they with are. the dimmers and everything? Ah, uh, they're separate. I've bought them separately. So, okay. Yeah. They are really good for... If you've got a link to those as well. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll chase that up. Yeah. I reckon you people want those. Yeah. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Tyres. And these round things. Rims. 15 inch rim. Don't see too many of those these days. No, anymore. it's good. It's good. A lot, lot more school. sidewall. Yeah, more sidewall. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and a 33 inch tyre on top, yep. which actually states 33 inch. We don't have 288, 285 or whatever. So it's a 33, 12 and a half, 15 inch rim, BF Goodridge, KM2s. Yep, KO2. KO2, yep. sorry. Yep. KO2. Any all terrain. These rims. Now, I just had a quick look at mine. Mine are negative 25. Yours look like about a negative 20. Is that that's, about right? That's about right. Six and, studded. Yep, uh, 15 by eight. Pretty sure it's an eight, eight inch rim. Mm. These tires, how long you had them for? I've had these tires now 12 months. How do you like them? They're great. What did you have before? KO1s, the BFG KO1s. KO1s before, yep. nice. So they, they were five years old and they've still got a third tread left on them. But I decided to put new tyres on when we did a gold pills trip last year. Noise factor? Can't hear them. Over the car? Yeah. <laughs> Grip? Great. On road? Great. Off road? Great. He likes these tyres? Yeah. Yeah, they have I'd a pretty, swear, pretty good name. I swear by BFGs. They have honest. a pretty good name. Let's get on to your lift then. Sure. What have we got? Lift a two inch lift of Old Bean Emu springs and shocks all the way around. And we have leaf front and leaf rear. Yep, four leaves all the way around. It's you need to you need to wear a kidney belt, that's for sure. Fourteen years of corrugation, you can obviously put up with it. Yeah, sure. It's not too bad. No, I'm I'm used to it. 
I'm yeah. used to it. It's a lot rougher than some other cars, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's good. It's very stable as well. Your leaf pack on the rear looks, um, it doesn't look like it's like upgraded in GVM wise, so you kept the vehicle pretty light then? Yeah, I've got uh, airbags behind there for the extra height, but yeah, the springs are standard, two inch, two inch height. What would you say is the biggest issue for a mid wheelbase lot like this? There's probably not much, though, really, but when it, when it comes to off road obstacles, driving over things, does it feel pretty stable? Yeah, it's, it's very stable. Definitely, it's got a lot of articulation. It's, it's actually very hard to get the wheels off the ground. Even with lift front and rear? Yeah. The only, the only major things I've got with this vehicle is due to the, the approach angle on the front, due to the length oh, of the, the pull bar. bar being so... Yeah, so far out from the yeah. front of the car. But I That's, suppose you've adapted your driving condition to it. Yeah. And you yeah. take things on a slight angle then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about knowing your vehicle and what it can and can't do. Mm. Your diff on the front looks very bloody big. Now, I'm not used to seeing a diff that big, you know, because all the newer cars now. Yeah, it's just, just a, it's just a stand, stand, cruiser, standard right? 75 series front diff. Both centres, front and rear, are the same size. Mm. Uh, exactly the same diff. Lots and comms. Let's start with your lights. Yeah. From a distance, I would say these are halogens. But you're going to tell me otherwise, aren't you? Yes, I've actually got HID upgrade kits in all four of them. So, you must uh, get some pretty good pencil light on the front here. Yeah, I could go on across Nullarbor, I can see a reflector three and a half k's away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good vision. These small LEDs down here, are they just to light up just the edge of the road? Or? They're just daytime running lamps more than anything. So. Yep. They do, they do make a lot of difference of visibility, other cars being able to see me on the road. Does your headlight do much? The headlights are good, yeah, they're really good. Have you upgraded them? No, I haven't upgraded them yet. I've got HID kits for them, but I haven't installed them yet. Okay, they're just so that standard. one's good from standard? Yeah, that's uh, the 70 watt bulbs. Wow, you're like the first person ever to say that the headlights are good. <laughs> <laughs> they actually are good for standard headlights, so. Nice. You have Three antennas. Phone booster and two UHFs. Two, two UHFs, yep. Nice. Normally I've got one on the highway and then one on the other channel. One on 40, one on the convoy. Both 6 dBs or? Yes, they're both both the same, yep. How do you find hilly area like we're in today? Uh, not not too bad. I, I don't normally have a lot of dramas with the UHF coverage. Mm. Obviously somewhere like this, you're not too far away from most other people. Distance on flat, uh, it's actually really good, really good. Do you get interference on certain channels with these two? No. Being this close? No. If I'm on close channels and transmitting on one, sometimes it will interfere. Um, Do you pick yourself up on the other radio sometimes? More just static. It just interferes with a little bit of static. So I've also got these fold down brackets fitted. So when I can actually fold the aerials down to go through low car, car parks and things if I need to. When the roof rack's unloaded, yes, obviously. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, sure. It is. Bloody cold. <laughs> so this is how you open your bonnet, eh? Yep. Can you um, want to tell us why you've done this? I had to take the bonnet catch out to fit the intercooler in when I fitted the intercooler. So uh, the front mount intercooler then? So watered air, watered air. So I've got the heat exchanger on the front. Ah, okay. Let's cool. have a look. Um, all right, well, let's start with the electrical. We've got to start somewhere. <laughs> yep, yep. So we have a negative to positive which means that two batteries in series and you have 24 volts here yep 24 volts so this vehicle on the front is running 10, 24 volts my question to you then is if you have a battery in the back do you yes third battery in the back one third battery so you've kept the rear to 12 volt and the front to 24. the whole car itself is 24 and i've got some 12 volt accessories running off the 12 volt battery in the back do you have a fridge in the back yes and that's yeah, running angle. on 12. yes okay they can run on 24 though, can't they? I think so, yeah. yeah. I'm not too sure, to be honest. All right. Well, that's, that's the power pretty much out of the way. You've got a lot of stuff going on here. I can see your DIY. Electrical is pretty hard to keep neat, but some people might not think this is neat, but I think it's pretty neat because you've got everything sort of going in the same way. You've got a compressor down here. Yep, ARB compressor. You've got an air tank in the rear. It's a single compressor. Does it run air lockers too? Yes, front and rear air lockers. Oh, nice. This thing's a bit of a beast. It is, yeah. So this is your water to air intercooler? Yeah, it's an eBay special, water to air intercooler. Oh, it's nice and warm. <laughs> I'll leave my hand here for a bit. 
What else we got going on here? You better point some other things out because I'm probably missing a lot of stuff here. Have you got gap filler in there? Yeah, so the um, standard air intake come across the top of the radiator. Uh, so I filled that up when I put the snorkel on. Got a thermo fan in behind the radiator to assist with the extra cooling for the intercooler. Got the water pump and everything down there. These blue hoses are for the shower connection. So it's got hot water and cold water. Nice. Yeah, I've got a uh, heat exchanger sitting down beside the transmission. Oh, in a good warm spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I've got the uh, the old, I uh, used to have a heater in the centre console. So I took that out when I had to put the f sub tank in. Mm. And now I've run the heat exchanger off those coolant lines. Has this motor had a rebuild since you had it? Yes, so I rebuilt it at 200,000 k's. And uh, yeah. And that was 150 k's ago? Uh, the transmission's been done as well. How's the intercooler made a difference? It's made a lot of difference. It pulls like a freight train. Okay. You can actually, when, when I turn the water pump on and off uh, for the intercooler, I can actually tell a big difference. I've got the temperature sensors either side, so I can sort of tell how hot it's going in and you out. You've got that gauge in yeah. there. Yeah, I've got a um, aftermarket wastegate actuator. It's now running 15 pounds boost instead of the standard eight. Still standard turbo, it's just uh, been rebuilt recently. Refurbished, okay. Yeah. What's on the front here? Uh, this is the heat exchanger for the intercooler. Yeah. Um, it was a very, very tight fit to get it in there. Talking about two alternators? Yes, uh, I ended up putting a second alternator in um, where the aircon compressor used to be, uh, mainly for extra power running the winch. So you're lacking power, you felt? It, it, I kept killing uh, batteries a lot and flattening the batteries when we were doing long winching, so I thought the second alternator would help. Yeah, it's surprising what you really find out when you are using the car a lot. It, it, yeah, yeah mm. I've definitely gone through a couple of a few sets of batteries with the winch, using the winch all the time. Double alternators, has that sucked a bit more fuel out of your car? Not that I've noticed, no. No, if it doesn't need it, it doesn't use the power. So, mm. so you rigged it up with new belt and everything coming off it? Yes, yeah, so it's where the aircon air con used to be, so I'm just running. So you got no uh, aircon anymore? No, no, no aircon at all. We're at the back of the vehicle now, we're going to have a look at what you got going on inside. Sure. It's a small vehicle, well, small as in cargo storage, so keen to see what you've done. All right, so we're organised with plastic tubs and toolboxes and run us through, mate. Oh, I, I like this. Yeah, yeah, so I've got all my uh, foam mats um, stuck up there and some cables and things. Nice. That's a good, good space saver. So uh, clear tubs so you can see what's in each one. Yeah, I've got a um, fold up set of shelves uh, that when we go camping, we'll pull it out, then put all the tubs into the shelves. So it's a really a lot more organized. Uh, so this is all stuff. Cooking stuff? Cooking stuff. And we've got some food, some essentials, and sauces and shapes. Uh, what else we got? We've got fly spray, mozzie repellent, cleaning. This is all my uh, cooking utensils, box, plates, cups, tongs. Just sort of stack it out like that. Oh, we've got some power under here, eh? Yeah, that's the uh, sub. Oh, it's a subwoofer? Yep. The tunes. So this is my camping bag with all the tent pieces in it. Is that your awning walls? Ah, uh, that's the annex for the rooftop tent. Okay. I didn't actually, it drops um, down. yep. I didn't actually pack the awning walls today. The old toilet chair? Yep, you got the toilet chair, table, shower tent. Uh, stove, hot plate. This is a 32. 32. Oh, 32er. Yeah. Oh. Peroni. Peronis. They're really good. Peronis are good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got lights, LED lighting up here. Is it turned on? So yeah, I've got the uh, dimmers. Dimmers here, so I can turn them on and off and dim them. Nice. You got them on both sides, eh? Yep. Yeah. Got the water tap here. And in behind the panel work is a filter, water filter. Nice. Yeah. 
Talk us through the filter. Uh, it's just a standard uh, caravan filter from Bunnings with hose connections. So how long does it take you to pack up camp and pull everything out? It looks pretty quick with the plastic tubs. When we, when we set up camp, it normally takes us about 20 minutes, 20 minutes to half hour and everything's set up, including the tent and the awning and stove and everything. And the pack up's pretty quick because it's just in the tubs, tubs go straight in. Yep, tubs go straight in, everything's got a home. Everything goes back in the same way. With the way you have everything stored like this, yep. what are some of your tips? I'm guessing one of them is, is make sure you've packed it all in so it doesn't all move around, but... Just working out the most effective way of it in there and always doing the same thing. Find a um, routine? Yeah. And routine. stick to it? Yep. Interior time. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. This is probably one of the coolest dashes I've seen for a while. Got all these red light, red numbers and blues, all kinds of stuff going on here. It looks like a cockpit on a plane. Where should we start? Uh, I'll start at the top if you want. So I've got the dash cam up here. Uh, it's one of the Blackview models. It's getting a bit old now. Uh, I've got the phone cradle with the external antenna. I've got the transmission temperature and intercooler temperature. What temperature do you normally sit on the transmission? Uh, it normally sits about 80 degrees. And the intercooler? Intercooler anywhere from 50 up to 100 on the inlet and 50 down to about 20 on the outlet. EGTs? Uh, yep, that's over here. That normally sits about 450, 450 to about 500. When it's standard? When it's running. When it's running. Yeah, when it's running hard, I can get it up to about 500. Boost gauge goes up to? 15. It's got a one bar wastegate actuator in it, so 14.7 pounds boost. So this is uh, my battery voltmeters and ammeters. Uh, so my main batteries are, that, that's the voltage of my main batteries, and then this one over here is the voltage of my fridge battery. Uh, this is a fuel gauge and pump for the Sub tank. Let's talk Trace. about your tanks. What's the what's the factory tank? This, the standard tank is a 75 litre. One the at sub the rear. Tank? Uh, the sub tank is 80, 80 litres. Oh, nice. So decent range then? Yeah, yeah, I get about a 1,000, 1,100 k's range. So uh, navigation, I run Hema Explorer most of the time. This is an, this is an iPad, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, 4, 4G iPad. Uh, so this is actually really good. So that's all your navigation is on this one tablet? Yeah, so I've got the online maps with the Hema Explorer, um, as well as having the four-wheel drive maps, all the offline maps on here as well. Um, they've both come in very handy. What radio is this? Uh, that's just a scanner, a multi-frequency scanner, digital scanner. Uh, it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Both radios on top of each other. Oh no, that's your Pioneer stereo. This is your yep. Icom radio. Yep, Icom 400. That's just a uh, 40 channel. It's getting a bit old, uh, bit old these days. Um, Where's your other radio? Over here. I've got the GME 80 channel, 3500 over this side, bolted to the side of the dash. So is that your primary radio? What are these buttons here do? This is so I can actually turn the stereo on without having the key in the ignition. Ah. Okay. Uh, so that's off and then when we're camping we can just have the stereo on and the charge is running and no keys in the ignition. Your locker switches are down here, eh? Yep, so I've got air compressor, front and rear uh, lockers. Down here also I've got my airbag control so I can inflate and deflate the airbags. So you have airbags in the rear suspension? Yes, put the airbags in because of all the weight. I'm carrying in the back end. Fire extinguisher there. That's a good spot for a fire extinguisher, your passenger yep. can grab it. Right here. Yep. Got my mag light up here. Oh yeah, rip that down for us. That's a serious light. Yep, 4D mag light. Uh, got the LED bulb for it as well. So it's really, really bright. And it lasts longer. Yep. This is a personal locator beacon. Costs 300 bucks. And when we're out traveling around in remote areas, it's Still good to have. Superb. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um, so wherever you are, you can just activate it and People will come looking for you. Interior light up here. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, I have a dimmer on it. That's cool. Yeah. 
So you can dim it and still drive your car so your passenger can read a map or something? Yeah, yep. Or uh, it doesn't attract so many bugs if you're camping as well. Water tank in the back, how many litres? Uh, 50 litre water tank. On oh, is your battery behind your seat, inverter, and what's that other box? Uh, so I've got three chargers, uh, four chargers there. The top one's a 24 to 12 DC charger, and the other two are 240 to 12 chargers. And then behind my seat, we've got tables and we've got recovery gear. Yep. This is where I plug the solar panel into, and I've got the charge uh, solar controller in behind the panel work. Uh, so I've got three of these around the vehicle at different spots. Um, so I've got extra length on the cable, and this switch here switches between 24 volt or 12 volt. Uh, so I can charge my main batteries or my fridge battery. With it. Happy Friday. Cheers. Ooh, bit boy. Happy Friday there. Cheers. <laughs> Q&A on the 74. Are you keeping this? Yes. I have no intention of getting rid of it anytime soon. Well, it's only going to become worth more the longer you keep it, isn't it? Yeah, it's, def it's still a work in progress. Mm. Well, they, so. aren't they all? Yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> never, never finished. So what is the next big plan for this vehicle? It's going to get a paint job soon. Get a bit of uh, cancer cut out of it and uh, give it some love. Restoration side. Yeah, things. yeah. What's the biggest trip you've taken this 74 Cruiser on? Biggest trip would be to Brisbane and back. I uh, went over for a mate's wedding. So I did, did the uh, four, uh, four and a half thousand k's each way. That was a long trip. That's the furthest I've gone in it. Uh, the longest trip I did was a two-week trip around WA uh, a few years ago. What's your favourite spot? Definitely a Carrigenian mill stream up through there. What's the worst part, best part about this truck? The off-road capabilities of it. Because of the wheelbase and all that? The wheel, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and having the lockers and stuff like that. It's, it's still got a lot of room inside as well. It's an interesting point to bring up with the wheelbase. The wheelbase is a, is a big thing. If you have a long wheelbase vehicle on the same size tyres, Essentially, you need a lot bigger tyres on that vehicle to have the same kind of clearance, same ramp over angle. What's the worst part about the vehicle? Only having two doors, sometimes. Being able to carry people is uh, a little bit limited, especially with a water tank and stuff, so it's only a two-person car mm. these days. Your top three modifications to this vehicle? Definitely the front rear air lockers. They made the car so much more capable without having to uh, abuse it to get to get places. Definitely the tyres going to the BFG KO2s, they're, they're a good thing. And probably be the spotlights, being able to see where I'm going at night time. With the HID conversion, yeah, obviously. Sure. So being a 74, I'd imagine some bits and pieces are hard, harder to get. Yeah. However, there must be other bits that fit it from other vehicles, other Toyotas. Yep. You did mention something about the, the 75 is, is the exact same front end. Yep the front div, which will kind of also, the, the rear must be the same as all, eh? Uh, yeah, so the, obviously the front end, all the suspension, steering, swivel hubs and all that, they're all standard 75 mm. series uh, bits. The rear end is sort of a hybrid with the 60 series. Springs? Spring, uh, it's got, yeah, so the same size springs as what's in the 60 series. Mm. I'm not sure about the diff. The rear diff's a bit unusual in the fact that it's semi-floating semi-floating rear end, not uh, full floating, like the standard cruisers. Where would you suggest people get aftermarket parts from? I've sourced a lot of my stuff from eBay. There's also Tojo four-wheel drive over in Queensland that I've just put a, uh, ordered a few parts from. A lot of parts I've gotten from United Parts International in Kudo. Okay. He's been uh, really good at being able to source parts. Where do you do most of your research to find out what, you know, things that fit and stuff, just on forums or? Yeah, a little, a little bit of forums. Um, there's a couple of good groups on Facebook with these with these cars. Uh, okay. They're always discussing what they have done, yeah. what they, what fits, what doesn't. Do you, any groups in specific? It's called the Land Cruiser Mid Wheelbase Owners or something like that. I'll, I'll find out okay. what it's actually called. You have a rooftop tent? You don't like swags? I chose a rooftop tent mainly for the being able to pack it up. It stays on top of the vehicle. Uh, and you're really protected from the weather. Uh, we've been in some pretty serious rainstorms in it and still stayed dry. And just the ease of packing it up, you don't have to put your bedding anywhere or all your bedding stays in it. Okay. Uh, it's very, very quick to set up and pack away. 
So why a 74? When I was looking at a four-wheel drive, I'd come across them and thought they were very well suited to what I wanted. Wasn't big, wasn't small. Uh, you know, it was in the medium sort of four-wheel drive space. Um, and then did a fair bit of research to find a good one in Perth at the time for sale. And then I've just stuck with it. Cheers for bringing a 74 No on. worries. Thank you for having us, Ronnie. Very unique vehicle. A lot of people will be happy about this mm. one. Now it's got to find a 75 like to keep asking for. Yep. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a job there. Anyone for 75, comment down below and we'll try and tee something up. If you want to know more about this vehicle, we'll link up in the corner there to the webpage entirely on this vehicle, on Russell's 74. And if you'd like to subscribe, just right here. And patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale up in this corner here. And there's another... Ah, let's make another Land Cruiser video down here. Cheers for watching, guys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Happy Friday. That's it, eh? Every day is a Friday. <laughs>